So we're here at the Lenara Connect, and who are you? I'm Karen Sandler, I'm the Executive Director of the Software Freedom Conservancy. So what does that mean, conserving freedom conserving for software? Freedom. Yeah, it's a conservancy, it's a, uh, it's a fiscal sponsorship organization. And what that means is that we're the nonprofit home of over 30 free and open source software organizations, including a lot of things you've heard of like Git, Samba, Wine, Inkscape, Selenium, PHP, MyAdmin, the list goes on. We also are Sugar the Labs, I saw. Sugar Labs, yeah. yeah. Um, and we're the home of Outreachy, which is formerly Outreach Program for Women, which is a diversity group. And we are perhaps most famously known for our um, GPL compliance program for kernel developers and the Debian Copyright Aggregation Project, where we defend the GPL. So defending GPL, is that possible? That means there's a contract out there, people make software, they have to share what they do, and that's the law? How does that work? So when you choose the copyright, so when you create code, copyright arises. You don't have to do anything special to get copyright. Copyright simply um, arises as soon as you fix your creative expression in a tangible, this is the lawyer in me, and you, know, you, you express the creative expression in a tangible medium. And you don't necessarily have to put any notices in order to have copyright, but what you do is you assert copyright by telling people that you own the copyright and the terms by which they can use it. And in the kernel community, that is most often GPLv2. Um, which is the, the prevailing license for the Linux kernel. And, um, and so by choosing that license, you choose which norms and, um, and expectations you have for the use of the license going forward. And so by defending the license, we basically, on behalf of copyright holders, tell people who are out of compliance of, with the license that they, they must comply and here's what it entails and please, please do a better job. So what does it mean? Does it means if they take Linux, they do stuff, they have to put back what they changed or no? How does, that, how does it work? Like, uh, I, I do videos with lots of different, and they, I get comments once in a while. People say, hey, where's the source code or something? Mm -hmm. So are they right? For your videos? Yeah, it like, depends uh, what license. So, so I prefer when I'm interviewed for, uh, and when I create anything, for my work to be under a free license, regardless of whether it's content or code. So, uh, so I would prefer to be quoted under uh, CC by SA or even CC by. Um, and, and what that means is that there are expectations about what to do with that, um, you know, with that material. So, um, so if, if you were the person who created the video, then you get to choose what license you want to put it under. So if you choose to have it under a Creative Commons license, then people can create, you know, yeah. uh, under a Creative Commons sharing license or, yeah. uh, you know, free license, then you, you basically tell people that they can do whatever they want with it, but if they do, they have to follow the terms of that license. What I mean is, uh, I go to Shenzhen a lot, and there's all these mm -hmm. cheap phones, mm -hmm. these cheap everything, and there's design houses making awesome stuff very quickly, and then people go to my video when I film that, they say, hey, where's the source code? So oh, it, could be, of the it could be all winner stuff, a rock chip, you know, all these mm -hmm. Chinese stuff. Uh, are they doing something illegal if they don't publish the source code? How so if you work? take if you take code that is released under um, you know GPLv2 or GPLv3, and you you distribute that that code in a product, um, then you must distribute the completed corresponding source code. You must or or, an, or give an offer for source um, that that's valid. And so there are, there are terms that you must follow in order to use that um, and to use that code. And so you know different countries have different norms and expectations, um, but um, you know a very high percentage of those products want make their way into the United States. And so the United States uh, has this kind of laws, but all the other countries might also. Oh no no, no um, most countries have um, yeah have, and, and I'm a. I, I'm a lawyer, uh, <laughs> uh, but, uh, but I'm only a U.S. lawyer admitted in, in the state of New York. So I'm limited into what I can speak to, but there are treaties that the U.S. has signed with other countries. And, um, and so while there are different um, facets of copyright law from jurisdiction to jurisdiction, um, most of the basic tenants uh, survive from place to place. What can you do with China? Can I mean, you go a, to China and say, question. hey, where's the source code? I mean, I think Can that, that? I think that in, in China the biggest question is education um, and sort of like explaining the benefits of software freedom and, and, and really also explaining the mechanisms that sharing code, um, you know, the, the mechanisms that, that need to be put in place in order to satisfy the requirements of the license and how much, uh, how much more opportunity there will be for the company when they do share their code. So there, I mean, there's a real pragmatic argument for copy left and for sharing. So I was sitting with some Shenzhen guys making a phone, you know, with MediaTek and stuff. And I was like, hey, it'd be so awesome if your phone was, uh, you know, people could like root it and install other and stuff and the software would be open source and 
and then they smile that they look at me and they smile and they say there's no way any design house will share the code in Shenzhen because they're so competitive and they don't they don't understand uh, they don't use it that way they want to be I don't know they're like a week or two in front of the other one and yeah, don't I mean, really it's, share. it's very short-sighted and what's interesting is that because they're only a week or two ahead in those areas that's a perfect example of where copyleft really works because you have the first mover advantage and you're going to your, your period of time where you're the new guy and you have that new thing is very limited anyway and you're the hot thing and everybody wants what you have and then if you move it you know then and then people move on to some other product or some other company and if you were collaborating together that meant that your next product would be stronger based on what the other person who was using that code came up with so really in a, in a long-term way you know, there's the, I mean, it's all, all the reasons why the, the Linux kernel ecosystem has developed so strongly in the United States. So if they were sharing all the code, they would actually get more customers, they yeah. would get more business. Yeah, I believe so. All right. So yeah, and, and, and the industry as a whole would benefit. So what have you been talking with the, these guys about here at the Linara Connect? Yep, um, I have been talking about people are very interested in compliance. They're very interested in the work that Conservancy is doing to help defend the GPL. Um, uh, there's been a lot of really interesting talk about security um, and, and about the role of copy left in security and how important it is. Copy left? Copy left. What is that? Copy left is, I love that term. Copy left is basically the term whereby you use copyright, which is the, the uh, a monopolistic framework, but instead of using it to um, to be restrictive, you uh, you use it to share. So it's instead of copyright, you have copy left, and it's a it's a it's a sharing license. And the idea behind its connection to security is that if you're not sharing um, complete and corresponding source code with installation scripts, then over time you're you're going to be out of luck because you will have problems. Um, maintaining your products, making uh, security fixes, the, the, the end of life will be, you'll, we'll have all these, these we've, ha we've already had all these amazing um, disasters. I mean, just because software is free to open source software doesn't mean it's automatically safe, secure, and better, but over time it has a chance. Cool, and the stuff that they're doing here in Linaro, mm. uh, all these companies working together on improving Linux and ARM is cool, right? Yeah. And I mean, I, I love the, these collaborative communities, and all of the uh, the Linux kernel-based communities are, you know, are just really dynamic. And developers are such extraordinary people. And what is cool is that I think developers are starting to really understand their personal role in the ideo ideological component. I think developers have, for a long time, been quiet in their ideology, and they basically let the company's legal departments be the most vocal proponents for the decisions that their companies have been making and I think that's starting to change as developers are starting to see in my, in my talk I mentioned Volkswagen because it just came out this week um, that Volkswagen had this uh, uh, solution in software whereby they were hiding their real emissions so that they passed testing and that was a huge um, a huge rift in the faith that the consumers had and what's happened is that the Volkswagen stock has plummeted. So by not doing the right thing, the company has, in fact, hurt their bottom line. Is there really, so, so sort of translating that to our space, as developers sort of see that their companies should be doing the right thing, getting more invested, getting more active, helps the company stay on track, which will also help it be profitable. And articulating those technical reasons to legal and to management becomes incredibly valuable over time and is one of the most important things that developers can do for software freedom. Nice, and they don't need to to, to worry too much about the lawsuits and everything? You just manage everything for them? Well, we do represent a, a, a coalition of kernel developers and bring lawsuits, but we tried not, we were, rather we funded a lawsuit by Christoph Hallwig, but we've, as you've noticed, there haven't been very many lawsuits. We tried not to bring lawsuits. We try to get compliance in a friendly and cooperative way and try to use uh, lawsuits only as a last really a last effort but it has to, it has to be available because if you're not willing to bring a lawsuit you can't start at step one in compliance so you, you the first step you go you say hello uh, how about the software being open or something yeah I mean our first step is we try to find the right con we try to find the right contact for companies that are involved in our in our ecosystem it's much easier we find the right engineer the right manager and we, we contact them and say hey there's a problem sometimes those companies say good point. I'm going to work on that, and they fix the problem. Um, sometimes we actually had one thing that got turned around within two weeks. Um, so sometimes um, companies that are in the know, it's 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 um, you know it's quite fast and it works out great. And then companies, there are some companies who are um, 
just unknowledge, you know, just don't have any knowledge about it, and then we recommend that they get up to speed, and we uh, we ask them to produce better source candidates. And then uh, there are some companies that wind up just willfully doing the wrong thing, and that's what that's when we have to really get involved and um, and eventually there has to be a mechanism for a lawsuit because if there isn't there won't be any incentive for companies to do the right thing I hope you can get to China and uh, send some guys over there or some other people talking with the you know that that they get on board with the whole uh, opening everything yeah. and and that people like Google should also develop Android in the open and not have these secret partners and stuff It's yeah. a little bit anti-competitive for the people that are not in the secret group, secret meeting rooms, right? I mean, developing so. out in the open is, you know, I, I think that's what we've learned in the kernel community in the U.S. and in Europe during, um, you know, the the last 25 years is that we're 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 actually all better off if we collaborate on as much as possible and. Um, and I think that a lot of these Chinese companies will come to the same conclusion. And there are a lot of pragmatic arguments for copyleft that are not ideological, although there are the important ideological points too.